Hey guys, I'm Tamar Mayer. Welcome to the Knockout Trader Dojo and our Market Unwrap series. Now in this series, I'm going to take a look at current interesting mover and shaker fundamental news and then their counterpart technical analysis. I want to see how they all stack up and to see if we can uncover any hidden nuggets and insight within these charts. So this week, the Fed paused a 15 months rate hike campaign. This one started all the way back in March. Now this campaign has sent the S&P 500 into a bear market, which by the way, despite all these rate hikes and calls of recession, just surpassed its high from before the Fed started the hikes. So with all these calls of recession, maybe it's like the boys who cried wolf. I mean, at some point it may come, but after constant calls that recession is just around the corner, we've seen bond market basically pricing in, the Fed cutting its interest rate for the last couple of months, every time pushing it and saying, within the next six months, within the next six months, but now they're pushing it into 2024. So the job market is still strong. The economy is still chugging along. So perhaps the market is just getting desensitized to these calls. So the Fed has warned us of more hikes to come. They basically said another half a percent. And the ECB, by the way, did the same. So after yesterday uh, doing as expected, hiking their rate by a quarter of a percent, they said that there is more to come. But the share market kept on rising this week and the S&P had its longest winning streak in since last year. I think it was November, October, November, somewhere around that area. So a pretty big move. The German DAX is in it's about a whisker away from its all time high. So, you know, what does it mean about all these recessionary calls? And let's think about the Nikkei as an example. This one has broke its previous highs around that 3700. It was quite a predominant level. I will take a look at the charts in a bit. But even this one has been on a tear. It's currently trading at 33 years high. So on the other hand, yesterday, we also learned that New Zealand fell into a recession. So could this be the first domino piece to fall? Now, even though it's not one of the biggest economies in the world, what's interesting is that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand was one of the first to embark on a campaign of very aggressive monetary policy tightening. So the fact that New Zealand fell into recession first, could that be a precursor for recessionary fate for the rest of the world? There's a question. Now, there are a few more wild cards that could uh, shake up the market. So we've got the arrival of El Nino, and that could mean persistence and potentially a much higher global food inflation. The Bank of Japan, even though today they said that they're keeping their monetary policy at bay, so still very loosening monetary policy, what would happen when they start to unwind that policy? This could shake up the bond market quite sharply. So there's a lot of shakes and, and fear in the markets as well. So let's take a look at the chart. I want to take a look at the chart of a couple of interesting index markets. And let's see where they are and what could we expect from the next couple of, uh, of days and weeks. So this is the Nikkei on the monthly chart. And as we can see here, ever since uh, 2020, we've been pretty much going sideways. And here is that strong resistance level. And we just smashed through it and we're very overextended, meaning quite a strong distance between where price action sits right now and the moving averages. So there is an expectation at some point for a pullback. Now, if we'll take a look at the next time frame down, we can see big, big push in the last couple of weeks. Could see a bit of a pullback. It could coincide with a pullback on other index market. It could be for a reason of fundamental news. But from a technical point of view, this overextension is basically a warning sign to say to us, hey, watch out. This thing need to release some of this very, very strong buying pressure. 
Now on the daily chart, as we can see, it's a very beautiful, nice uptrend that just hugging its moving averages. So for potential setup, I'm always looking for a bit of release of the pressure that we currently have in this bind pressure back into the averages. Here we've got some uh, spring here in the shape of the previous swing high and looking for continuation. But keep in mind, this is very, very overextended. So it could do with a healthy pullback. Now let's take a look here. I want to go to Germany and I want to start here. Well, let's start with the daily chart. We're already here. So this 16,000 area, very strong level. We popped above it. So this pop cleared the previous all time highs and we made a low and a lower low. But this thing didn't last long, came back to that 16,000 and pop our head above the previous swing high again. So once again, we're looking quite strong, but as the market behaves around all time highs, we might see a bit more compression or might decide that this is done with it and we're going to continue higher. So I just want to go back in time to previous reactions to all time highs. So you can see when we reached here that 13,000, we went to a lower low, came back up, rejected it. So there's a lot of activity around those levels. Uh, let's take a look at the 10,000 area. So that was interesting because this was also uh, a very big psychological number. So this is when the DAX moved from being uh, quoted in four digits to being quoted in five. So big, big psychological level. And you can see we've been here for a couple of months before we popped higher. So the shape of this recovery, you can see it's a V shape and we are overextended. So if we could do with a bit of a, a pullback or even just going sideways here around the averages. Let's take a look at one of the strongest index market around and that is the US NASDAQ. Now, this one has been on a tear as well. It's the AI mania. And as we can see, very, very strong push. But look where we touched yesterday. We basically came into this resistance level around the 15 to 60. So if we drop down the time frame, we can see this level was the origin of the move that pushed to a lower low. So a lot of activity could be expected around this area. It's been an area that belonged to the sellers in the past. They might want to take control. But when the market is such, it has that it's exuberating kind of like excitement around it. We might not see it reacting to this level. So a bit of cautious if we're looking to do something in a counter direction. But as it looks and as it stands right now, um, I would love a pullback into this area and another attack on that area. Very, very strong market. The one that it doesn't look so good, and this is where it brings back these questions of recession, because there's a lot of talk about why the S&P moves so much. It basically because of this couple of IT companies. If we take a look at the Russell and then we'll have a look at the Dow, we can see that these ones, they're not going anywhere. So this is the Russell after that drop, we've just been going sideways. So all that amazing move that we've seen on other index market, the Russell is not sharing that enthusiasm. And uh, there's a lot of talk that, you know, the Russell is representing the real economy. Well, the Nasdaq, it's all about the hype of the IT and the S&P that just a couple of uh, strong companies are moving the market. But if we had subtract those companies, those movement in those companies from the S&P, we would actually see it going lower. So if we'll take a look here on the Dow, it's a similar case. We can see we had a small recovery and then we're going sideways. We don't look as strong as we do with the S&P or with the Nasdaq. So maybe this is a tale of two different economies. So where is my uh, S&P? There we are. So maybe this is a tale of two different economies, the economy around the IT and tech and AI and all of that, and the economy of services and commodities and everything else. So this could be a case of uh, Nasdaq keep on chugging along higher while the Russell and potentially even the Dow just going sideways or really going nowhere. With the S&P, the fact that we broke this August 22 high is quite significant for this market and we could see it trying to get ahead toward that 
4600 again for potential setups always looking for pullback and signs that the pullback is over and looking for a continuation but could be that yes maybe a recession will arrive at some point but uh, first we don't know when and we can see how wrong the analysts are time and time again that they are saying recession within the next six months and then that time has passed and then we get another extension on the time that recession will start and maybe it will be just a situation where recession will hit one part of the economy but not the, the other and, um, and the index market actually represent that. So the different uh, indices actually represent that. Happy knockouts, everyone. Bye for now.